יאללה, בואו נתחיל! תום אביב? תום אביב! תום אביב! תום אביב! תום אביב! סופרייז, סופרייז, מודה The king is back! What's up, brother? How you doing? Hey, Rafi. How are you? I am good. Thank you for letting me. Uh, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for having. It's weird to say thank you for having me because I'm having you. That's true. But thank you for having you on 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 your podcast. Sounds good, guys. This is a this is a very exciting podcast. We we can call him a celebrity to some degree. You have a you have a very big channel, almost 150,000 followers. Very interesting tattoos. Okay. And a so, lot. Yeah, so we're gonna get we're gonna get into that. So as soon as I so what came to mind as soon as I saw you, bro, was I was like, who's this Israeli David Beckham guy making food? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's it's really I, funny because David Beckham for so long, even still for today, is like an idol for me regarding uh, uh, first of all in the in the sports spec aspect, the will and the. Uh, the fact that he became so big, but then the fact that he finished with football and he's still doing what he likes in the fashion industry, in the football uh, industry as well with uh, Inter Miami. And he's an idol to me. So saying Israeli David Beckham, like you bought me from the start. You I'm had happy. me from uh, hello. That's it, right? <laughs> Guys, we got to introduce the channel. I always have my little introduction. Welcome to another episode of Soothing Semantics. I am your host, Rafi Pinsky. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, leave your comments, and here we go. So we already did did the little welcome. Uh, Mr. Aviv, Mr. Beck, Mr. Uh, uh, Tom Beckham. Mr. Tom Beckham Aviv. Tom Beckham Aviv. <laughs> so Tom owns several restaurants. You have a few restaurants in Israel. You have restaurants in Tel Aviv. You have a restaurant in Morocco, which is very random, very interesting. So we're going to get into that. I love the idea. You seem like the guy who... If ever, when everyone is doing one thing, Kilo, on purpose, you make it your business to do something different. That's what it seems like. I it's see like, myself as a cooking gypsy. I will look on your treasures, gypsy. Is this understood? I will look on them. In a way. <laughs> like, um, it's funny because uh, we talked about it before we started, and I told you that I'm a big UFC fan. Same. And if there's a quote that I'm using a lot, is uh, one from Khabib uh, Nurmagomedov, is uh, people will ask me, where is your next uh, restaurant going to be? And I'm answering, just send me location. I'm here. Send me a message, like location, location. I'm going to come. Whatever you want, doesn't matter. Ireland, New York, Brooklyn, or Moscow, doesn't matter. And I'll be there. Like, I have no problem. I don't. I I have no boundaries. I just want to feed people. Okay. Eventually, and yeah, people are trying. People usually try to focus on an area, and uh, trying to maximize them on a on on the scale of uh, of the scale of uh, celebrityness and 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 the culinary and all of those. But I I I I want to spread my world, my word, my food. So yeah, send me location. That's that's my goal. Send me location. Yeah, I love that. That's that's um, for whoever doesn't know who Khabib is. Khabib is one of the best mixed martial artists who's ever lived. He's, he was in the UFC. He retired. But the the uh, fact is, he, he was never shy from a contest, and ever, he, never. he 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 didn't have problem to 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 fight. And I think in my business, uh, fighting is part of our life. We always fight. We fight for the quality of the food. We fight uh, to maintain our workers. We fight to please our customers. And I see it as a fight, but in a good way, as a martial arts, not as a, a war. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I relate to it so much. So I, I will tell you, like, London, yeah, send me location. I will be there. Uh, Africa, Asia, I don't care. You got to go to London because I hear all the food in London shit. That's what they say. That's what they say. I think, you know what? Changed, man. Changed. I think London is the culinary, one of the greatest culinary cities in the world right now. Really? Cause I, but I heard not about the English food. Not the English food. It's a metropolitan of, it's a bundle of a lot of cuisines 
and because there are a lot of people with money and a lot of good restaurateurs there, you will find good restaurants there. Um, for example, Sexy Fish that we have here initially started in London. Ah, for okay. example, um, uh, uh, Novikov initially started in uh, in London. Uh, no, Nobu, no, but there is a Nobu, Cipriani. All of those places. But Cipriani is Italian, I think. It's Italian, but it's not, it, the, the, the biggest one is in London. Interesting. And, and London started a lot of... Uh, great uh, culinary waves so i know for a lot of, a lot a lot of time people said like the english food is shit which is which is true but i think london specifically uh have some really good restaurants interesting interesting okay uh I, i've never been there so i have to check it out i will take you sounds good so 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 tom has just opened a restaurant called branja and he actually just had, uh, you said Joe Jonas come, like he, he came yesterday? When did he come? Yesterday, John Jonas was here. It's crazy. Um, it was crazy because um, my restaurant in Tel Aviv is Coco Bambino and it was uh, for a long time known as the celebrities uh, where to go in Tel Aviv. Like you want to see celebrities, you go to Tom Aviv's restaurant, Coco Bambino. And I think in some way, we're starting to have it here. It started, uh, yes, with Joe Jonas. We had some s Israeli celebrities who came here uh, that were here during Art Basel as well. Uh, but John Jonas is the first one who is like... Huge. Huge. Uh, the thing is, he came as a regular customer. He didn't ask for anything. It wasn't a collaboration. It wasn't like a, a free meal for publicity. He just came and he published two stories about us. One of them is saying that he predicts us to be the new hottest place in Miami. Which How is did he hear about you? I, I don't know. I don't know. We, the, the thing is, we, 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 are op we, we are opening in stages. So first mm -hmm. stage was only the bar, which is 20 people a night, and now we have like the small towers. It's not full capacity yet, so we are not really marketing, and we are not PRing. So... I don't know how people like I every every night when people walks in I'm surprised. Really? Still, yeah. It's true to uh, all of my restaurants. It's I'm always surprised that I have clients. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm really I, I know why I know why the girl I know why the ladies are coming. I don't know if it's I don't know I don't know if it's for the food. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm a straight man, but we could admit it. You're a very good looking dude. Thank you very yeah, much. And I'm cooking, which is a, a plus you're as well. You're actually making the food? I'm actually making the food. I'm the chef. Are you? Are you? So are you plan on, get, on getting married, or are you just gonna? Um, <laughs> I'm asking this as a joke. We're not gonna sit on this. Yeah, but because actually that's funny. Every customer is now in a, so it goes 50-50, 50, 50, 50 Israelis and 50 Americans. But the 50, 50 okay. Israelis who comes here, Israelis located in Miami, and Israelis who is visiting. And they would say, oh, man, good for you. Go for the debut in uh, the U.S. You're killing it. Israel, Casablanca. When are you getting married? This is, <laughs> this is, the, 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 this is all the Israelis. Because they don't want go. you to take their wives away from them. Uh, That's why maybe, they say, maybe. They're trying maybe. to get you off the market. Yeah, That's what they're it is. trying to. Oh, the, I never thought about it. I just had my 35th uh, uh, birthday last week. And... Uh, I think it's about time. I said, I said, my, I, I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a person who like to set goals to himself, mm -hmm. and I think I said until thirty, I'm gonna have kids, and uh, with the S at the end. So, I think I need to start work on it. Okay. Well, listen, ladies, get in line, and uh, may the best one win. Yeah. So, so subscribe, let's and uh, I will reach you. <laughs> <laughs> I will reach out. <laughs> so, Thomas. When you when you were growing up, first of all, tell us where in Israel you grew up and what your we don't we're not gonna sit let's not talk too much about the childhood, but I wanna get into an idea. Let's say just a quick idea of what your your childhood was like and how you decided to to become a a, a chef. And by the way, real quick guys, I forgot to mention. Tom, you gotta check him out on Instagram. He's got a very cool channel and he won Master Chef in Israel. Master Chef is kinda like how you have Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. Israel has all these different shows. They have their American Idol, their the Voice, and yada yada. So, 
he actually won that that contest, which is huge. It is, yeah. and and by the way, yeah, we ha we have everything we have from Big Brother to Survival to everything. We have all of those shows in an Israeli version. To be honest, MasterChef is one of the the biggest in rating. Just so you know, uh, so yeah, winning in MasterChef is huge. Uh, but I will get to that in a minute because I don't want to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. spoil well, the surprise. I have, we have a lot to talk about. Um, I won't go deep into my childhood. This is not a therapy session, but I will uh, briefly uh, go yeah. through things that uh, maybe will uh, interest you, interest the crowd, and are related uh, to uh, eventually why we're sitting here. So uh, I'm a unicorn. An Israeli unicorn, that means that I, I'm born and raised in Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. okay? Central Tel Aviv, not even other parts of Tel Aviv, like Central Central. Um, my, uh, let's say, attached to the restaurant business started when I grew up, when I was born, because I was born with uh, the restaurants of my parents. My parents were restaurateurs, mm -hmm. pretty successful one in Israel. Uh, what are the they, names? They had uh, they had uh, a restaurant uh, that called Picasso okay. in Tel Aviv and in Herzliya Pituach. Huge restaurants. Then the culinary scene in Israel in the eighties was not really existed. During the nineties as well, they were number one, like literally number one. I remember as a kid, forty people standing in line just to eat because there was no any other options. So I grew up with the best chefs. Uh, one of the chefs that was my judge in master chef worked for my parents. I grew up on his on his knees, like literally. Um, but the fact that my parents were restaurateurs doesn't necessarily brought me uh, to the business. On contraire, they didn't want me to do it. They were really against the idea of me, first of all, taking over the business because this is, was my idea, but they closed uh, Picasso in 2001, so that wasn't uh, uh, an option anyway. But when I grew up and then later in life, they never wanted me to, to, to go into the food business. Mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 18, I, I uh, went to the army, obviously. Um, a little bit before... before uh, Where did you serve, by the way? I was a commander in uh, yeah. base train okay they called me the satan i was oof, i was <laughs> bad you were tough on them huh? i was you know, it wasn't tough it was just bad uh, they, they, sometimes in my case the idea of giving so much power to an 18 19 year old crazy dude is uh, it wasn't yeah, yeah, good yeah, yeah. but uh, i enjoy i really enjoyed my service um uh, near gaza I, I i i learned a lot about myself i i grew up um and I was a lone soldier because my parents left Israel uh, before I, I went to the army, my father to London and my mom to Miami. Uh, uh, okay, so she's been here for a while. So she's been here, yeah, yeah, since I was 18 and something. Wow, okay. Um, but I wasn't a lot at home. Uh, I wasn't like, I wasn't a jobnik, as you say, that goes every day. So it wasn't that bad. Like, it's not a sad story. Don't take out the violins. I was a lone soldier. <laughs> it's just a fact. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, after the army, I had my uh, uh, problematic phase. Uh, partying, drugs, everything that you could have done until uh, I decided to stop. And all of those times, even when I decided that I don't want to do any more uh, partying, drugs, uh, South America, all of the things that every Israeli do. And I, I decided to go to study. In my, the back of my mind, I always had the will, the, the, the want, the, 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 the really, really, I really wanted to do something with food, never as a chef, as a restaurateur. And maybe it's because this is what I knew. As a kid, you know, you, you go to the place that you that you know. My father said, "No, go to study." I went to uh, IDC. I That's did uh, I did uh, two years in IDC in uh, business and management, and then uh, at the third year, I did a uh, student exchange in Bogota. I lived one year in Bogota, Colombia. Okay, and 
in Bogota, I remember that I had a plan to open a restaurant, an Israeli restaurant. Hard to not do drugs in Bogota, homie. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but not that much because I was like after my, my narcotic phase. So I survived. I think if, if it was before, maybe, we, maybe this conversation would have happened. Like, uh, yeah, I was, I was problematic, but like in a not very crazy way. Okay. But through the end of my year in Bogota, I decided that I want to stay in Bogota. I had a, 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 an idea to open a restaurant. I found someone to invest in me. And then I had a problem with my visa. I couldn't stay in Bogota. And I been, went back to Israel. And again, the ideas of uh, doing something with food came. In that point, I'm already with a business degree. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wanted to open a sandwich place. And I said to my father, I want, I want to open a sandwich place. And in that point, I think instead of saying no, because he knew that it's going to drive me even more because I'm a rebel, mm -hmm. he said, you know what? You want to work in the food industry? Go to work go to work as a cook or go to do something, come back with an idea and uh, I will open it for you. I like that. I like that. He made you go, go out there and earn it. And then he's like, when you're ready and you have a plan. Exactly. Through. And then I went to work in Miznon. Uh, Miznon is a pita counter, but li like very chefy, owned by the Eyal Shani, which is the chef of Hassalon here in Miami. Okay, okay. I worked for him part time, and part time I worked at Chuka Carmel making uh, kebab sandwiches. Age of 25, I think, with a business degree, working in Chuka Carmel. Like, what did I think about myself? I remember that my father came for a visit. He came to Shuka Kamer. He saw me. Um, in my head, I said, ooh, now he's proud of me. He's going to say, look, you're working in two jobs. You, you, make, you make yourself dirty and, and you do, really do it. And, and, and he took me to the side and I was waiting to, to him to say, yeah, I'm proud of you. And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, what? He was like, you have a business degree? You work in Shuka Carmel making kebabs. This is why we waste the money on your education. This is what we do. And it shattered me. I left. But what I don't understand is you were going into food. So what did he expect you to do? He wanted me to go into food to give up. He, he In his head, I think, he, he knew that after like a few months doing dirty work I would, would because quit. he saw me as a spoiled kid spoiled brat he said yeah he will go he will deal with like pressure with the kitchen and everything he will hate it and move on so what did he think you were going to do something in business like a like a lawyer or something else something in business i asked him what to do so that in that point i said okay what should i do and he said real estate said, okay real not estate. land like a real not land yeah okay real estate i don't know okay and I started to go to job interviews and I'm telling you, Rafi, nobody wanted me. Like, I had the worst run of job interviews. I went with the button-up shirt, not even with the polo shirt, button-up shirt, said all the right things. Did you already have all the tattoos or that was later? No, 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 I didn't. No tattoos, just under, I, then I had a rule, no tattoos that goes over a short sleeve. So I can go sh with short sleeve, but I look... Tell. Okay. No, and nothing you on your head, tell. nothing. Nothing, nothing. Okay. And by the way, do your parents give you shit for it, or they, or did they used to? Still, still giving shit for it. We will get to it because it's so it's much. related to everything. I have good questions, man. I have yeah, 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 yeah. I will yeah. answer everything. So, cut a long story short. In the end, after six months of looking for a job, I some company, marketing company, hired me. Market real estate. I did it for like one year. You know, with the bottom-up shirt every day, hated my life, hated myself. And then I, uh, then in one trip here in Miami, uh, I came to visit uh, Apple Buena Vista. It wasn't existed yet. Uh, my parents just had the, the, you know, the plans to do something here. And then uh, I had an idea about the compound and they said, you know what, come and work with us. Okay. And for me, working with my parents was kind of giving up. Like I said, okay, I don't find myself in Israel. Nobody wants me. Um, 
uh, I will take this opportunity. Like I have nothing to do. Right. And um, and I decided to come, and I packed uh, I packed a suitcase and I came here. And I started to work with them on the marketing of uh, Upper Buena Vista, uh, about renting the places pre pre rent and everything. And then after one month or so two months, I, I I ran out of clothes, and I said, okay, I need to go back to bring some clothes. And I went back to Israel for one week with n- nothing, yeah, not even a trolley, like handbag and everything. It was Tuesday, and on Wednesday I got a phone call from Master Chef asking me to come for an audition. And but did you you tried out or you just got a I did you? didn't try out. Later on I re- I I realized that uh, an ex of mine registered me. Uh, uh and I didn't even Crazy. knew about it. They called me. I said okay, when? They said tomorrow. It wasn't like a big audition. It was like the the really the first auditions. I remember that I woke up a day afterwards. I took a, a, a mixer, blended. Uh, it was a watermelon gazpacho. Okay, a watermelon gazpacho. When the um, they tasted it, had some interviews. You know, they ask you some things, and then when I finished all the round, it took like two hours. Uh, they signed me. They signed me up. They gave me paper and they signed me up. And I was so happy. Because after one year of not getting any jobs, nobody wants you, uh, get, you get signed. After two hours, I was, I was in the sky. And I went outside and, you know, there were people with me that, you know, I, I, we became like friends. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, man, they signed me up. And then I hear another one, uh, yeah, they signed me up as well. And then another guy said, they signed me up as well. Then I realized they signed everybody. They sign, okay. This is what they do. They, right. they signed everybody. And I was shattered. You thought I, it was exclusive. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought something happened. And then I realized just for, for any case, you just sign everyone. So I said, okay, I failed in another... Another interview, another test. You I went felt back like you're home. Kicked in the ass. Everything's just going wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I packed the other bag and went back to Miami. And after two weeks in Miami, I get a phone call from MasterChef, and they say, "We really liked you. We want to make you to make and film the ID, and to bring you to a film audition." I said, "Are you serious?" Yeah, they say, yeah, 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 we're really serious. Uh, but you need to be here next week. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember why, but the first thing that came out of me was like, I can't, I, I can't be there next week. I have, uh, I have things to do. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, so when can you come? I said, at least one month. And they said, okay, we will, go come and we will call you back. And then they called after 10 minutes and they said, okay. So we they, will, they allowed we, you to do we, the audition at, later on. Yeah, apparently they had the time, or somehow they, they 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 made the time. So in that point, I knew that they really want me, just for the film audition. And then we did a family gathering. My father in London via FaceTime, uh, my mother and her husband, which is Got it. they're all partners. We are like a telenovela. And I remember sitting there and I'm asking them, what should I do? Because I found myself here working. I feel I'm feeling good. But, you know, there is an opportunity to go to MasterChef. And I remember that uh, David, the husband of my mother, didn't really have a, uh, an opinion. And my father didn't have a really opinion. And I didn't have a really opinion. And then my mother said... You know what, Tommy? Go. Sounds like a nice experience. Make the audition and come back. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can cook. So you're not going to pass the audition. So So you didn't think you could cook at the time? They didn't think I can cook. And to be honest, yeah, I didn't think I can cook. I only cook at home, like salmon and stuff. Nothing's fancy. I ate a lot as a kid. Isn't that a crazy lesson, Tom? But hold on, because it's just... People never think they're ready for anything because you're never really fully ready. 
And then you get an opportunity and you either can say, fuck it, I'm not doing this, I'm not ready. Or you say, F I'm doing this, everything will work out later. So you know luckily, I mean? my mindset right now is that. Right. Like if you will ask me the same question, that like the same dilemma that I had then, the answer was like, I will do it. Worst case, I will fail. Right. In that, in that moment, I was like, so it is a waste of time because I don't know how to cook. There's no chance I will win Master Chef. And if I will, even if I will pass the audition, so what? Like another 1,000 people will know my name in Israel. What does it do to me? Why? Right. But I decided to go. Cut a long story short, I wasn't back in Miami. I stayed and I won the show. Um, and this is exactly what you say. We never know that we are ready or can do anything until we try and do it. And I think that that's a great lesson. Like, try, try, fail. Because if you don't try, you already fail. 100%. And I will tell you about my experience. So I came for the first day. There's like an orientation day. There are like 24 people that pass the, the, the audition. And then they do like another audition. And just then they film you for the final audition. And then you're on TV. So there's a, a lot of process. And I remember that I came the first day with the 20-something people, and I felt so small among giants without even knowing them. And I remember that I scratched my head and I said, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> I This is not my place. I have mm -hmm. nothing to offer. And that mindset went with me until, I think, the middle of the contest. And in one point... I remember I won a mission. I won a mission like I was the, the best in the mission. And we we used to film from 4 a.m. to 4 a.m., mm -hmm. 24 hours, mm -hmm. two shows a day. And I remember that I'm on, in the, the cab from Jerusalem back to Tel Aviv. And then I thought to myself, and I said, Tom, you can really re win this thing. Like, there is a chance. And then my mindset changed totally changed because i said yeah i can win it and i will tell you something as a kid i was an i was an average kid i did everything i did judo i did uh, i uh, played the guitar i i i ran like everything and everything i did averagely never won like my biggest uh, win was in high school third place in 60 meters run mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. And MasterChef was the first time I won anything in my life. So maybe that's why your parents doubted you, because they were like, ah, he just, he doesn't, he didn't do things all the way, whatever. He's lazy. Okay. He's a spoiled brat. He won't finish it. Like, he's not strong enough. He's okay. And... So had a, as we say in America, you had a chip on your shoulder. You had something to prove. Exactly. And, okay. and, and for a long time, I think for a long time... I, 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 my, my fuel was to prove, uh, to prove a point to my parents and, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's still somewhere in, on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how many restaurants I have. It doesn't matter, uh, how successful I can be. It's not a matter of money or it's always something to prove. And, um, now I know how to use it, I think. And I think I think I can use it. So to summarize everything, I never studied culinary, never really worked in the culinary industry. Um, MasterChef uh, showed me that I can be a winner, that I can be successful. And this is the 10th season of uh, MasterChef in Israel. And... From 10 seasons, I'm the only one that have more than one restaurant. There is another one who opened the restaurant, Avi Levy in Jerusalem. I'm the only one that opened more than one restaurant and the only one, obviously, to open restaurant abroad. Um, 
like I, I consider myself and, and it, I know I'm controversial in Israel I'm the bad boy of the culinary scene but I'm the biggest winner of MasterChef without a doubt wow. and, and this is not something that I can it's not something that you can really uh, it's not my imagination it's something you can see like I have restaurants I have clients this is what you're I gonna do. be you're, you're, it's very clear that you're gonna be a celebrity restaurant and a, and a celebrity brand it's crazy what the israelis are bringing to miami they've already brought everything man just all of the the different restaurants and and, and party scenes the list goes on man i'm not even going to start listing names but all the, the the whole just nightlife restaurant scene is just forget about it man. i like, think right now um tel aviv with london are in the top uh, culinary scene, city scenes. The big difference between them mm -hmm. is Tel Aviv is really small. Yeah. And I think what's happening right now is restaurateurs and chefs, as myself, mm -hmm. finding that going out business wise and growth wise is the right decision. And I think. All that good things that we do in Tel Aviv, when we take it out, it's become even greater. So we have some fresh branja food. So that's good. We started to speak about uh, cuisine and Israeli food, mm -hmm. and we had a problem with the mic for a second. So it was a perfect timing uh, to bring some food. And um, before you, you try, I will speak about uh, Israeli food briefly and then you, I will explain what you're eating and how it's connected to what we're speaking about. Sure. So I did a lecture to the IAC about Israeli food and it's funny to say it, but I don't think that there is an Israeli cuisine right now. Okay. I think it's a bundle of a lot of, uh, a, a lot of um, cultures Falafel is from Egypt and hummus is not ours and shakshuka is Tunisian and everything. So what we are doing right now, and I think it started with one generation up. My generation is continuing and in two generation time, it will be complete, is creating the Israeli cuisine from that bundle. So I think Ayal Shani from Hasalon is one of the first who started to do Israeli food mm -hmm. uh, is uh, cauliflower, for example. I have uh, a dish that I call kruv, which is uh, which is cabbage that is I consider it Israeli in the in in the matter of how I do it. And now you're gonna try one of those bundles uh, that became an Israeli uh, cuisine. So. It contains a lot of uh, cultures. So you have the pasta, which is Italian, and then the sauce is kind of uh, bouillabaisse, which is a fisherman uh, French soup, but it's all in arak and arak, really, and grouper and grouper oh. head. So uh, eventually, it's very Israeli. One of and culture-wise, I put the lemon on the side so you can squeeze it because in Israel we like yeah, to everybody. eat our fish with with lemon sure so uh this is our fisherman pasta i want you to try it uh i i it's hard to see food without tasting it but you can try to express yourself sounds good i'm excited uh, so have fun enjoy bon right, let's see what we got here just have to just have to move the mic a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have uh, if you if you the, if sure you from working. the ones we eat with the. I'm gonna look at you like uh, like in MasterChef, you know. <laughs> we always have this. Uh, I see, I just I see the the love the love you have for it. So I just kind of use the spoon and. and yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's uh, it's very it's very soft. So this is the grouper cheeks which is mm. the best part of the grouper, I think. Mm, that's phenomenal. Phenomenal, folks. <laughs> mm. we, gotta, we gotta do a little bit of, we gotta do a yeah. little bit of lemon. Yeah, 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 there's a reason for the lemon. There's a lot here, so I hope you're gonna share it with me. Um, I will. 
So what's the mode? You, do you, you just, you have a certain way you do it? Because chefs always do things like, I just eat food. Other people make it. So when... <laughs> it's, so when it's funny because in my perception, I don't like to make food very complicated. You know, not to give you too many things to do, but like squeezing a lemon is enough. Like, I don't want you to do any more anything else. Like, mm. I don't need you to cook my food because there's a lot of times that you get a dish and they will tell you, take from here, put there, start with that, start with that. And then you get some confused. Okay, let me, I, I need to taste it as well. <laughs> Let's this see if I did good. Guys, absolutely delicious. Fantastic. I'm trying to, th I'm trying to think about... Holding the, the spices that are in here. Spaghetti, I've never been able to properly do it. It's always been a challenge. I will teach you if you need to. Ah, uh, yeah, the spoon, that's the hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. You ever saw the scissor thing, by the way, how people use a scissor? Mm. How people cut the spaghetti. Yeah, no, it? I don't like it. <laughs> All right, it's, it, it's good. Um, so for me, for example, if we speak... Like such an asshole. It, no, just do it. <laughs> if we speak about Israeli food... I consider it uh, Tel Avivian food. Okay. One of the inspiration for this pasta, it's um, a very well-known chef in Israel. His name was Rafi Cohen. His name is Rafi Cohen. He had a restaurant called Rafael, and he had a grouper uh, head pasta. It wasn't uh, the same pasta, but for me, it was a Tel Avivian pasta. So it was, I knew for a fact that I'm going to, gonna do some kind of a grouper head pasta and although pasta is italian bouillabaisse is french eventually it's the tel avivian cuisine this is how i see it normally on a podcast by the way people would take a little bite out of it be very be very um Classy. Like, let me take a little bite and then we'll keep talking. This is fucking delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going eat at it. Eat I'm it. going at it. No, listen. <laughs> so now, now, this is the moment that I adore to see people eat. Like, people ask me, um, "Wow, but you're 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 supposed to be like fat. You're a chef." And I go like, first of all, I know that Massimo Bouture has a has a book that called "Never Trust a Skinny Chef," and I agree. Don't trust me eat my food uh, <laughs> but then I, I really enjoy feeding people more than I like to eat and it's weird but it's true I appreciate food I love to eat but if you ask me what I prefer I prefer to see people eat my food then I really like it mm -hmm. it gives me satisfaction like I can never get for anything else and I um, think it's all about this we are hosts in the end of the day mm -hmm. Uh, we host, we feed, and we need to like it. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy business. And if you don't do it from your heart, um, to one, one, one way is to go crazy because of it and, and to hate what you do. And the second is to just not do it right. And I think this is the, 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 the secret with doing food or being a restaurant, uh, being in the hosting Absolutely. Uh, business. Yeah, you have to, I mean, you have to enjoy it. See, for me, it's, I've never really gotten into cooking. That's okay, but yeah. you like to eat. I love to eat. That's good <laughs> enough. That's good enough. Okay, so first off, you mentioned that, that Israeli cuisine is like a mixture of different things, you know, because back in the day, Jews came from different places. But even from, even from, let's say, Arab countries, there must be foods that Jews created. We just don't know exactly what necessarily. Okay. I have great, uh, great, great knowledge about it. Uh, I, have a, I have a restaurant in Casablanca in Morocco. And as you know, we have a lot of uh, Moroccan Jews in Israel. Uh, they consider themselves, and I'm, 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 I'm proud, they consider themselves the best cooks in Israel. You will see that most of the chefs are somehow Moroccans in their blood. And they have great food. Mm -hmm. When I go to Casablanca the first time, I wanted to eat uh, some uh, Moroccan food. And it was different, totally different. So I learned that the Jewish Moroccan food and the Moroccan food in Morocco is totally different. So for example, Madbucha. Mm -hmm. We all know what Madbucha is. And when I told 
that I want to do a Madbucha version in my restaurant to my partners, which are Moroccans, Muslims from Casablanca. They said, you want to do what? They didn't even know what it was. said Madbucha. They didn't know, they didn't even know what it was. And I can tell you that you can agree on it or not. I think the, the, the Moroccan food is great, uh, but a lot of Israelis who will go to Morocco and expect some kind of food will be disappointed because it's not the same food. It's not the same food. Moroccan fish, for example, doesn't exist. We call it Moroccan fish. It doesn't exist in Morocco. So there is a... That is one of my favorite fucking things. But you don't... You won't find it in Morocco. They don't, it's not from Morocco. No, it's not Moroccan. It's Jewish Moroccan. Jewish Moroccan. And oh my God, I love that And shit. I think it's true to every country that there is Jewish food. So there is a Jewish cuisine... Gravlax, all the deli food that we need, kavet katsut, chop liver, on all sure. uh, gefilte fish. <laughs> so is, there is a Jewish cuisine, but when we're talking about Israeli cuisine, think about it. It's only 75 years. Right. Think about the French cuisine. How many years? It's been around for ages. Ages. Yeah, yeah. And how, from where a cuisine grow? It's grow from needs a lot of the time. So if you think about eras, um, foods like um, fish and chips of the English uh, came because there was no uh, good way to preserve fish. And then the solution was to coat it, to fry it. And the idea of fish and chips is to open it and eat only the fish, not the butter. With time, butter became a thing. That's one example. Uh, French toast, originally called pan perdu, lost bread. Why? Bread that was going bad. Mm -hmm. They were put in milk and they will do uh, what we call today French toast. So a lot of food became what they became because of a need, because of the leak of way to preserve food from other, uh, other eras. Mm -hmm. We didn't have it in Israel. So right now, yeah. we are not doing doing uh we are not creating a cuisine from need we're creating uh, a cuisine that based on creation on taking stuff and making them better and that takes time so i think right now we are on the way to an israeli cuisine um but we are not quite there yet uh -huh. we have no curry we have no fish and chips we have no risotto we have we we don't have those dishes yet, but we will soon. So I'm sorry to explode this Israeli cuisine bubble. No, we it's do super have interesting. we do have our version. There is that th th there can be an Israeli restaurant that will do a lot of different cuisines in in one palette of in one language of spices and tastes, and this is what we have right now. When I think of Israeli cuisine, I think of more of a spicier as opposed to sweet. Of course, there are sweet things, I'm sure, on, the, on all the menus. But when I think of a lot of the, it's either very strong on the breakfast. So you have like Abale, right? I've actually never been there. But that seems like a very brunchy kind of place. You know that place? Yes. It's okay. the guys from Pura Vida. It is? Yeah. Okay. They have a lot of organic things. They make everything look very sexy. They have all the smoothies and the, you know, the organic kind of things, right? And everything's very colorful. Then you have the other Israeli kind of thing where it's heavy fish, heavy meat. Shawarma, hummus, Love. where when we go to the to the heavy side of uh, of food. Um, I think the Israeli cuisine that we are talking about is very vegetable based. Mm -hmm. Yes, spices, yes, heaviness in the palate, but not heaviness in the body. And I think the new Israeli cuisine is very... Uh, vegetarian uh, oriented and very Mediterranean in the the way of using fish and it's very it's very light cuisine yeah so the the, the, the heaviness that you're talking about it's the Jewish Arabic kind of food the Israeli food will take the hummus and will use it somehow to make it you know, like chefy and very light. Right. This is the Israeli cuisine. We will take, like I have risotto in my restaurant 
that is uh, based on a Kurdish soup that's called Hamusta, which we, we, we give a Kube in it. And it's the lightest risotto you will ever have in your life. It's not a, the Italian risotto that you can't, Move. you need to go to sleep afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the Israeli way now is to do light, easy, and very smart food. And this is what I think. Uh, by the way, you, you haven't, uh, you, you spoke about sweet food? Uh, well, I didn't bring it up. Yeah, I brought it up. Yeah, you brought it up. So um, I want you to taste. You will keep the, the eating it after that. Gonna, yeah, this is gonna be gone. Believe yeah, me. I know, I know, I know. It's there. <laughs> and by the way, we will go down, <laughs> the, and you can eat the, uh, the, even more. Sounds amazing. That food, that plate's not gonna be uh, full when I'm done. <laughs> I will get us some cutleries, but uh, this is uh, this is um, uh, something that I can relate to as an Israeli cuisine. You know what I think of right away? I think of. When I see it, I think of what's the uh, crack pie? B- either baklava because of of the pistachio. That's what it is, right? Mm, yes. Or, or like uh, a lot of kanafa, they put it on a lot. So th- I I like I like where you went with it, uh, but eventually in this case it's a it's a crack pie, mm-hmm. which it's a, an American dessert mm-hmm. uh, made out of almost one hundred percent butter. What we did here is change the butter to brown butter and tahina. So what's going on right with this one? It's it is a crack pie with some creme fraiche on top and some pistachios, but you will eat a crack pie. In the end of the bite, you will feel halva. Okay, so I will bring us cutleries. I want you to try it. It's one of our best creation. I'm really proud of this one. Are your par- as long as your parents are proud. <laughs> I think they're You think at this point they are? <laughs> The judge. Da, 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 da. So take take a bit from the creme fraiche as well because it's sweet. But uh, we talked about sweet food. There is not a lot of uh, Israeli dessert. That's true. That is phenomenal. There's so much going on. Mmm, that's so good. Oh, that's so. You know it's great. I went on a boat yesterday. You know, for Lauderdale they have the uh, the, the parade, mm-hmm. and I'm still a little bit hungover. And this is like it's so it's so nice. Yeah, oh, that is so good. So in in this case, by the way, this is this is sour cream, right? Uh, creme fresh, yeah, sour cream. Uh, so the the fact is because it's almost only fat because tahina is fat as well. Uh, for hangovers, it's perfect. Oh, fucking amazing. Yeah, thank you. I like. Uh, uh, I'm. You see, that's what makes me happy. You I see know. my smile. Now I'm so, good. Like I can, I can start my day in a shitty phase, and then one by one of these bites, your smile and your comment, mm-hmm. like your honest comment, Delicious. everything is gone. Absolutely. Like I'm and happy now. You know, it's funny. I'm not a big dessert person. It's not that I don't like dessert. I just I don't eat it that much. But if I if I have something good, like. I like a good, like a hot chocolate cake or a good cheesecake. This is phenomenal. So I will tell you something. I'm not a big dessert person as well. And my decision was not to hire a pastry chef. Mm-hmm. What we do mm-hmm. is we call it the cook's desserts. All our desserts is made by cooks, by me, by my, my, uh, so, uh, my cooks who work with me. And cook's desserts are pretty different. They're not fancy. They're not crazy no gels no very simple not so sweet things that we like to eat right and this is uh, our our signature uh uh dessert so it's phenomenal thank you very much it's really really good thank you very much yeah you, are you gonna have some of that no no it's yours <laughs> it's okay that's mine okay so how did you first of all how did you come up with bronja how did you come up with the name to be honest, uh, uh, there was a restaurant in Israel that lasted for like one year that's called Branja, but, uh, and I forgot about it. Um, when we thought about Branja, we thought about the community that we have in Apu Buena Vista, mm-hmm. because it's, everything is very communal and uh, everybody is helping each other. And then the word branja is like, uh, you can say an inner circle. Like Where the, is it from? 
it's Israeli branja. I'm part of the branja. I'm proud. It's like a slang. I never heard of that. I never heard of that. Yeah, not, not a lot of people heard of it. So branja is like, if I would tell you you are part of our branja, you are part of the the gang. You are part of the inner circle. So I never for heard in, that. I never heard that word being used. I don't know. It's weird. I I actually I'm using it quite a lot. Okay. And then I said like I like it. It sounds Latin in a way. It sounds maybe American. I don't know. It you, sounds you, everything. You ha this has a very. How do I think of this? This vibe is very free flowing. Your whole restaurant, your whole energy that you give off is very, I think, like Missy Bateva. You yeah. Know, you know, like random place in fucking Hawaii or wherever where you have all the bamboo and the and the wood feel to things. All of Abu like, Vista is a little bit out of nowhere because if that. you think yeah. if we if we go uh, five minutes from here, we will be in the design district. We look. 100% different and mm -hmm. other side it's Little Haiti so we have this place in the middle of nowhere with trees like like we build something from nothing and that's true for Braja as well we gave like a Tel Aviv 70s Tel Aviv vibe experience from nowhere and people who comes in at night they feel that they're in somewhere else in the world, somewhere else in the world. Yeah, they don't feel what, in, exactly in Miami, and that was the idea. We are in Miami, but we are not trying to be Miami. Interesting. Yeah, it's a very cool energy. Thank you very much. So when you walk in to this to this complex, you have you get this very beachy vibe, like you're on some. Uh, I mean, Florida kind of has this, but you have to really check it out for yourself, guys. So. What are what are some of your plans now? Because you said you're doing things in phases. So when do you plan on having the restaurant totally ready to rock, ready to go? So we did one month, until now, we did one month of hosting only on the bar mm -hmm. because I wanted to, uh, you know, get myself ready to the bigger quantities of uh, qu uh, quantities of people. Now we Two days ago, we opened the terrace. Mm -hmm. And then I guess in, in three weeks from now, Everything gonna be open. We are talking about 150 seaters, a cocktail bar, full cocktail menu, huge, uh, huge menu as well. Not too huge. I don't like big menus, but the menu gonna be changed daily. The next phase will be open brunches. Oh, people we're gonna have that. crazy weekend brunches. Music and, DJs kind of thing. Uh, yes, oh, yes, okay. but uh, but not like too too party like. A little bit low key, but the place that you want to be in in the weekend. Um, then I'm gonna open for lunch. I want to do business lunch, business bundle lunch. It was very uh, common in Israel in the early two thousands uh, to do like a very uh, nice business bundle that you can eat in lunch. You 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 get like crazy amount of food for like a nice amount of money. So. And then the last phase will be open the bar inside that sits on the on the kitchen for omakase uh, because uh, we are uh, omakase is really Israeli style omakase so it's going to be like eight seaters that going to have special tasting menu and Very in cool. this uh, place I want my uh, I always say it's funny because I say it and I, I'm, I mean it like we're not only shooting for the stars. Uh, we're ex again, we're not shooting two star. No, how did I say it? I will start it again. You will edit it. Or we'll just use it as a blooper. Like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm always, uh, I'm, I'm always saying that we are not shooting for the stars. We're shooting two stars. Why? Because we want Michelin stars, and and that's what I want to achieve inside on the bar. And um, it's not because I'm a freak of Michelin, but you know, it's good for your ego. Why Sometimes not? you do things for your <laughs> ego. It's funny. It's a good answer. Hold on. Where, where'd you put the water, by the way? Um, oh, it's right there. Okay. It's okay, it. We have another one in the. Yeah. This this should do. This should. Do. Okay. Um. 
It's going to be cool, man. I'm, I'm just really honored that I'm doing this with you right in the beginning. Like before, before you start really exploding and all these big people come, it's going to be really cool. First of all, I hope it will, uh, it will happen. Uh, secondly, before I open Branja, you know, on Facebook, when they, uh, when you have like pops of posted, uh, this day before eight years ago, when they show you like posted, that you post and then they tell you how, how, f how long it took, like. On 2006, you posted this one. So a day before I opened Branja, I went into Facebook and this article pops and it says six years ago, today, six years ago. And it was an article when I said, I might open a restaurant because I was very against opening a restaurant. Even after I uh, won MasterChef, I, I didn't want it. And I, I, I was really, uh, like, I was speaking about it. I, I don't want a restaurant. I did some private chefing. Mm -hmm. It was good money. And then I had this, this article. And I said, you know what? Maybe I'm ready for it. And it was six days, six years before I opened Branja. Now I'm with uh, four, four restaurants, yeah. Wow, so you got yeah two in Tel Aviv, one in in Casablanca. I have uh, Coco Bambino in Tel Aviv, which is a, a restaurant very party style. Mm -hmm. Then I have Fat Cow, which is a burger joint, uh, was nominated three years in a row for the best burger in Israel by Time Out. Uh, I have Milk and Honey in Casablanca. I know where I'm going in June. I'm going to my friend's wedding in June, so good. Uh, I will be, so I will, yeah, I'm you will be my guest in both of my places. Are you going to be in Israel at that time? I'm. I, yeah, I am. I am uh, probably, I'm in and out. It's a done deal. It's a done deal, my and brother. And then Casablanca. Um, everybody's asking me if I, if I moved, like if I, if I left Israel. And the, the, the correct answer is kind of yes. Yeah. Because uh, most of the time I'm going to be here. I'm still gonna go uh, to Casablanca and to Tel Aviv to check and everything. I'm still controlling my businesses. Uh, you know, today we have Zoom meetings and everything. But I, I came, I came to do my debut here and and to try to to grow here. And everybody is asking me, why did you do it? You have so much fame in Israel. Like you are one of the biggest celebrity chefs in Israel. Paparazzi articles, tabloids, dating with with you know I'm I'm the bad boy so a lot of uh, uh, articles about me dating this one or this one like speculation and everything like you know prop Spe speculation sometimes sometimes <laughs> it's true but you know like a proper 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 celebrity for example proper and yeah I, by the way before you told me about the British thing I'm like does he have a British accent. A, a I bit, heard it a bit. And my my mother, my mother have a British accent, and she so I have the mixture between Israeli and British accent, it's which is weird, but I like it. I'm sure other people like it. So, uh, proper celebrity, yeah. and they said, "Why did you left it? Why why did you why why did you why are you leaving it? Like why do you open a restaurant in the U.S. right now? You have everything you need. Just open another one in Israel." Mm -hmm. And I think in this case. And, and, and always people tell me you are starting from zero right now. You're starting from nothing. I don't see it this way. I, I think that in one point in your life, you need to choose if you want to, to, be, to be the head of the ahinas or the tail of the lions. And I think I chose to be the tail of the lions because yeah. being the head of the ahinas is easy. It's very easy. It's comfortable. You are the head of the pack. You're in a good place, but that's it. This is your glass ceiling. Choosing to be the the the, the, the tail of the lions is it's it's hard. It's a lot of work, but eventually there is a chance of being a lion. There's a massive reward potential. Yeah, you're you're coming into a place like America where the celebrities are internationally known. You know, you have the celebrities in Israel. Some of them are internationally known. Most of them are not. Most of them wants to be here and, and doesn't have, you know, the, the courage. But isn't that kind of sad how so many Israelis are leaving? Do you think that's going to continue to be a thing? Like, I, I, going off topic a little bit. I think it's really sad. And that's why I said, that's why I, about myself, I said, 
the big answer is yes, I left. Uh, but work-wise, uh, I will never leave Israel because I have my apartment in Tel Aviv. I still have it. And I, I, I don't see myself as Yored, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I see more and more people, uh, celebrities, not celebrities, like everything, just they're, they're leaving Israel. <coughs> Uh, not just because of uh, their work, just because they don't want to stay in the country anymore. I think a lot of it, a lot of it is because of the w- the wars and the conflict. I think people are kind of tired of it. A lot of it. Um, I think, to be honest, I think the, 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 the smallest problem of Israel right now is the war and the conflict. Yeah. I yeah. think the biggest problem in Israel right now is what's going inside. Like the uh, government and stuff? I'm, I'm no, not not necessarily the government, not necessarily politics. Obviously, it's a part of it. Um, I'm like, in my opinion, I'm, 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 I can see myself as a right wing. Yeah, me too. Um, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the hatred in inside, 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 inside. and obviously. When I, when I'm talking about the conflict, I'm my, my the conflict that concerns me is the conflict between us and the Israeli Arabs inside, the conflict between the uh, the the Orthodox and the non-religion, sure, and the left wing to the le- uh, to the right wing, and then take all of this aside and look at the violence that you have on the roads right now, you know, every day. And uh, the violence that you have everywhere. So we, we became a very aggressive and a violent country. And I think people are sick, sick of that. Like people are sick of thinking uh, that, the, that their drive back home can be their last drive. Yeah. Because a crazy guy can come and stab them. Yeah. People, are, people are literally starting to go with, with knives on them in Israel. Well, that's why hopefully, hopefully... We're this this new leadership of, we'll see because every time they talk and talk and talk and we'll see what happens. But that's complicated, man. I don't know. That's the thing is it's I, too complicated. But I will tell you something. We always what 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 is what's the good thing about Israel, and it's always good about Israel when we have a conflict or when we have like a mashber like something something happening from the outside we all become like brothers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we all stick together we all we all we all love each other there's no hatred i think was it the last conflict that we had or or even in covid for example we were separated it was the first time in history that i saw israel as a country dealing with something from the outside and we became even more separated and that's my that's what's frightening me i think eventually we always knew how to become one in 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 danger and i hope that it, w- it will come back because our strength is our togetherness totally. no left no right in time of war you go to war everybody goes to war one of us go to war everybody everybody of us go to war this is israel mm-hmm. right now i feel that we are very much separated even you know what even fifa world cup right now did you see that guy by the way what's his name guy Hachman. what's his name guy Hochman. yeah oh my god yeah he, he, <laughs> he's great i know him <laughs> nice guy he's he, so funny he's he's funny <laughs> but the fact that morocco right now is winning yeah and you there are a lot of moroccan jews that are cheering to morocco but in the other hand they they held the palestinian the flag yeah. so now there's a conflict about that people are fighting inside israel about support the, the, if you can support or can't support the moroccan team in football i don't see it as an issue of fighting inside you understand yeah, 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 i yeah. don't think we should fight inside we have more important shit to worry about exactly it's stupid yeah exactly but it is what it is man. it is what it is two jews three opinions four opinions Five, yeah it's 10 15 man that's yeah, how it, it is beca- it's became bigger and bigger with time man <laughs> it's crazy yeah so so tom before we we wrap up what are a few things that you could uh, some advices 
that you can give to guys or, or girls looking to get into the food business? Harsh truths, your best you know, learning lessons. What are some things you could, you could give? It's always funny because uh, I always say the first thing, uh, the fa- first advice is don't look at me and take me as an example. <laughs> Because I was at the right time, at the right place, I had a lot of luck, and 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 after after my all of the luck, then I I started to work, and I can tell you that I'm one of the hardest workers in this industry, mm-hmm. inside the kitchen and outside, that's for sure, and this is my real advice: you need to work your ass off. Sure. And nowadays, especially with COVID, hard work became a minor issue. People don't like to work hard. Um, When you go into this business, especially into kitchens, there is no hours and there is no rush. There's no quick stuff. Nothing comes quick. Nothing. There's no shortcuts. Uh, You need to choose it. You need to understand that it's as if you, you need to understand that although celebrity chefs look like rock stars, the work itself is very, very same every day. You don't, you don't, it's not, it's not a roller coaster. It's a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a long ride, but it pays if you really loves it. And I think that young people who wants to get into the business need to know that even like working is more important than studying Mm -hmm. that's for sure experience is more important than knowledge 100 percent. in this business for 100 percent and being successful in this business doesn't necessarily linearly connected to money eventually it is but our goal needs to be feeding people and making people fall in love with our food and with our art but until you get there you need to see this business as a as a craftsmanship we are craftsmen we're not we're n- we we don't start as uh artists like in a way, in a point, you get to be an artist, but you start as a cr- craftsman, and we need to make our craft better and better and better and better. So it takes time. Be patient. Work hard. Work harder than anyone else in your kitchen, out of the kitchen, everywhere. And, and it is what it is, you know? There's no magic formula to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know research be obsessed with it it's this is the kind of business that you need obsession i lost my mind to this business i'm it is what it is like mm-hmm. i have no children and i have no family right now 100 percent because of this business and i will have it but That's the sacrifice but yeah. you need to know that there is a lot of sacrifice in this business specifically it's physically it's mentally it's everything together in one bundle and you need to be willing to have it and then you need to understand through all of this hell when you get to your heaven it's great it's great a lot of small satisfaction in the in in the road happiness is 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 break that you break down the happiness to moments in this business it's not like a startup when you wait wait to do your exit to sell and you become rich man this is not the this is not the case it's an ongoing journey that will follow you until you say enough right and people needs to know it because i know that this generation and you know the other generation the young generation they they want the instant um, things every, everybody wants it like that yeah, yeah there's yeah. no instant in our business there's no instant you don't you don't become a, a chef or restaurant owner in one or two or three years it doesn't really happen and then again even if you win a reality show a master chef like me 
I tell you, from 10 seasons in Israel, which means around 300 people, there is one. So don't take, I'm not the example. Right. I'm not the example. I'm the example after that, yeah? As I said, I'm the hardest worker. That's what it takes, man. It is. That's what it takes. I, uh, the, what's amazing is all these rules of like these life rules and, and lessons, you can apply to almost everything. Everything. Yeah, it's just everything. so true. The, you know what? If, if, you want to take, if you want to talk about something that I can relate really, really, really to, um, to the um, um, kitchen and restauranter business, Mm-hmm. And, and, and young people who, who will hear me should really consider it. It's, I'm lucky that I struggle addictions on my 20s, 21 until 23. I had drug, ad, drug problems and everything. I passed it and nowadays I'm, I'm not touching drugs. Uh, for a few weeks I'm not drinking anymore. I, I quit cigarettes and everything. And... Yes, it's for your health, obviously, but there is a lot of temptations in this business, and the idea of being high during service is really, is really, it's it's fun, it's easier. Everything passed really easier, and it's good, but it's not sustainable. Right. And when you get into this business, you need to know that it's an ongoing party, but you need to know that the party is for your guests. You are not part of the party. You can act like you are one of the party, but never get into the party because your lifetime in this business will be very short. That's very good advice, and I think that's that maybe is what happens to a lot of people. Yeah, they think they want to be. They, they want to be part of it, and they they get too lost in that, and they forget who what their job is supposed th- to be. And this is a sad story that we hear. You are not part of the party. You are the party organizer. But you are not part of the party. Never be part of the party. If you want to party, do it on your day off. That uh, that I think is the, probably the best lesson so far. That's thank amazing. You. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tom, thank you. Well, I came to you, but either Rafi, way. thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, having my food. I have more to eat. You I have a lot it. more to eat. We go down and you oh eat even God. more, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Ladies and gents, we are wrapping up over here. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, leave your comments. Make sure to check Tom Aviv on Instagram. Yeah, follow me. Follow me. I need more followers. I need more followers. Tom. If you need to advertise your your cologne, he does cologne advertisements, boxing advertisements. I'm, I'm actually, I'm sort of joking, but I'm not. You did, was that an actual advertisement, the one with the cologne? I did, uh, I got, did, yeah, you I did. did an endorsement? I did, uh, I do Adidas. I'm the uh, ambassador. Directly with Adidas? Uh, directly with Adidas. I am the ambassador of Omega Watch. I have a <laughs> knife set in Israel. And I did uh, 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 CKY. Yeah, CKY? What's the name of it? Uh, uh, Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein. Yeah. Oh, you do? Wow. I did Calvin Klein. Uh, Calvin Klein and Audi. I did few. Damn, I did few. bro. Crazy. Yeah. This is why I love this podcast. It's amazing. People yeah. But this is like a side jobs. It doesn't matter. It's amazing. I know. I like <laughs> You probably have so much so fun. So if here. you need a face that can sell, I'm here. That's it. <laughs> That's it, baby. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. And uh, till the next one.